It will be Tennessee, Texas. You may or may not know, but Rick Barnes was a longtime coach at Texas. Texas was building quite the a little resume there. And Texas said, no, you got to cruise. Will Rick Barnes take this game personally, given the fact that it's his former employer? I am, and I've told you guys this before, and I'll tell you guys this again. I am the last person who ever projects altruism on the people. I think everybody is somewhat fake, and everybody usually loves themselves a little bit more than they love what they're doing. Um, you used to always say, Dave, that Philip Fulmer loves Tennessee, but he loves Fulmer a little bit more. I think that's the same with Nick Saban, right? He loves his, he loves Alabama players, but he loved his legacy a little bit more, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, I, think it, I think most people do in general. I, exactly. I mean, even, I think, even the most selfless people, let's say like preachers, they have to look out for their family and they're by themselves, right? Yes, exactly. Um, I think Rick Barnes is one of the exceptions. And I think he's not taking this Texas game personally at all. I don't think, I think Rick Barnes is so Zen-like in his religious beliefs. I think he is in this just for developing people and developing players and just loves the idea of doing that. I think he, I don't think there's any sort of revenge factor or any sort of, I want to get back at them for firing me on his mind whatsoever. I don't, I actually don't. And I would, I, there's no, there's very few coaches I would say that about. Rick Barnes is one of the coaches I would say that about. Uh, today's tough question brought to you by our friends at the Hemp House. That was a heck of a try, Caleb, but no, I think you're wrong on this one, okay? Because I think that it's impossible not to feel a little hurt. I think he probably has, still has friends and family in Austin. Do you dwell on that? No, but it's kind of always in your craw. Now, everything you said about Rick Barnes is is accurate he's a christian and the bible does tell us that we are human and perhaps to feel anger or hatred is a sin in this case but nobody's perfect and i'm not even sure it is a sin i think he's personally affected by it i can't imagine how he couldn't be the hemp house the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety and great selection, strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemphouse chat with two T's.com. Hemphouse chat with two T's.com. Use the promo code HOOK for 10% off. Hooked for 10% off. He is one of the few coaches, maybe the only one that I can think of right now that I would tend to agree with you. I just can't quite make that leap. It's just got to hurt too bad. He had been there too long. I think he thought that was going to be his, his eventual home, Caleb. And you've got more insight into why Rick Barnes was let go. Share share some more of that with us. Yeah, so this all started. Rick Barnes started to get on the hot seat. I'm going to tell the full story real quick of Rick Barnes with his Texas tenure. He started to get on the hot seat roughly around 20, 2009, 2010. Texas had the number one team in the nation. They started to get like 15-0 and, and then stumbled to 24-10 and 10, bounced out in the first round. Then had two more average seasons, around a 32 exit, around a 64 exit. And then in 2012, 2013, they actually had a losing record and missed the NCAA tournament. And a lot of calls were for him to be fired that year. The next year, he turns it around, goes 24 and 11, makes the round of 32 and has everybody coming back. And there's this idea that 2014, 2015, Texas will be the team. He has everybody coming back. And then he adds Miles Turner. So it just seems like the perfect team to put together. And they stumble to 20 and 14 and get bounced out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. And the book out with Barnes was he couldn't coach. He could recruit, but he couldn't coach the players he recruited. He could coach the not great recruits, but he couldn't coach the five stars and the one and duns. And Texas fired him. And then Texas kind of came out and said, well, we could have kept him, but we just wanted to make sure he, we wanted him to change his assistance and get rid of his assistance and things like that and do this and that. Very David Cutcliffe style. And by the way, is there any dumber, sorry to interrupt, any dumber approach that you can have as an athletic director? We talked about this last night off the air. To go to you and say you've got to fire all your people that you know, that you built, so you get another year. But you've only got a year to build rapport with these guys. 
It's so stupid. If you are the head, like, it's so stupid. My thing, if my, if I were the athletic director, here would be my thing. You hire who you want. I'll back you, but you're accountable for who you hire. And if who you hire doesn't work out, you're on the hook just as much as they are. Isn't that fair to say? That's fair. how you do it, right? Fine with that. Fine with that. Yeah. And I just think it's idiotic to to expect somebody to flip it. Let's say half a staff because it's offense or defense is struggling to flip it and have four new guys. That doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me what's happening in Ohio State when they go out and get Chip Kelly. I mean, how likely is that to implode? Quite likely to very likely is the answer, Caleb. Yes, and the same when they did that with Bobby Petrino in Texas A&M. They actually weirdly didn't implode, but they weren't great. But all of that being <laughs> I, I knew they would be amazingly average because Petrino <laughs> yes. – I know I, I knew Petrino would get him to do the right things, technique and approach like, but I knew he wouldn't do anything special outside of the box. Amazingly average. That could be that's a good a, start. That's a that's like when you see people in Congress and they like literally are like 50-50 with one party or the other. They're like, they are radical centrist. <laughs> so, um yes. So Rick Barnes, but I'm I, Dave, here's why I still think he doesn't have revenge on his mind. Texas's coach is Rodney Terry, who took over, by the way, after the whole Chris Beard scandal last year, and he became interim, and they named him full-time head coach. Rodney Terry was a Rick Barnes assistant for 10 years, from 2002 to 2011. I told you, Rick Barnes is in this business for developing people and developing players and building relationships. He has no greater relationship with somebody than he does Rodney Terry. Whatever he feels about what Texas did to him, he doesn't want to humiliate Rodney Terry. He's going to try to win. He's going to try to do his job, but he's not going to have this personal thing of I want to absolutely humiliate them and let them know they screwed up firing me because I think he has a lot of respect and a lot of love and a lot of admiration for Rodney Terry, the coach at Texas now. And so <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead. Fish. And so this is, this is again, this is anti everything I've ever believed about every person in sports ever. But I think the goodness in Rick Barnes, which includes his love for Rodney Terry trumps, any ill will he has to Texas. Okay, but let me ask you this. Does it hurt more after the game if Rick Barnes loses? Does it hurt him more because of the tie brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design? They want to be your jeweler looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals, a Tennessee tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com. RickTerryJewelry.com. So, don't you think that it would hurt a little bit more to lose to Texas? Or do you think it's that far in the rear view? I think it's that far in the rear view. I think losing to Texas, the only thing that would hurt him is that he, as he acknowledged on Vol Calls the other day, he's very frustrated that he can't advance in the NCAA tournament. And it's driving him insane. I do think that now. But I don't think it'd matter if he lost to Texas or anybody else. It, I mean, I, I think a part of him will be happy for Rodney Terry if he lost to Texas, quite honestly. And... I mean, well, again, I think happy that Rodney Terry won. No, I, he's not going to be. I didn't say happy that Rodney Terry won, but you could, you know, happy for Rodney Terry. Like, you know, like when you, you know, like when your coach wins a game and it's like, I feel bad for their players, but I'm happy for what we did. It'll be like that. So, but the reverse. So, but no, I, guys, I know I'm crazy. You guys can call me crazy. You can call me naive, naive. And I'm not allowed to look at the message board. He gets Caleb all thrown off. No, 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 nobody on the message. I don't think anybody on the message board has called me crazy. I'm just saying in general, people can call me crazy on this because people hate you when you attach like character to coaches, because everybody's always like my team's coach is great and wonderful. And he's an amazing person. And every other coach is mean. Okay. That's what they like to do. But the truth is all of them are, outside of maybe Butch Jones and Urban Meyer are relatively decent human beings who are a little bit cutthroat. And I, I think, think that's a that... nice way of putting it. I, I think <clears throat> the vast majority, I'm not saying Rick Barnes, the vast majority are mercenaries that care almost exclusively about themselves, about themselves. Uh, they don't care about their family. I hate to tell you this, but they don't care about their family because they're willing to move them across the nation 50 times. They're willing to take a job and live some there somewhere without their family it's all about the job, and that ultimately fills some need they have in being part of, of something special, which I'm not knocking. It can change their financial family tree forever, but it's ultimately about yourself, right? I mean, coaching. Yes, it's mostly about yourself. It is mostly about yourself. I should the high school level, right? And by the way, yeah, 
I think Rick Barnes, young Rick Barnes, was about himself too. I just think Rick Barnes at his age now has, you know, I I, I think he's like that born again type that like is very zen, like that genuinely thinks. Um, put it this way: when Rick Barnes talks about his faith. I think he's genuine. I don't think he's like Hugh Freeze trying to cover for something. Um, I agree with that. And you would think by 69, 70 this summer that if there was any crack in the armor that it would happen by now. I always said that about Tim Tebow. I mean, to, when he gets to the point where he's 35, can we cut him some slack and maybe he just actually is a good dude? The poll question is up on the YouTube page, and we want you to go ahead and jump on that. It's brought to you by Ray Varner Ford. F-150 Ford Super Cab 44992. A 2023 Ford Escape All Wheel Drive 30,952. 2023 F-150 4x4 Super Crew XLT 549. Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. All right, it's pretty simple. Here is the question on the YouTube page. Vote now, and it's pretty much down the middle. Will Rick Barnes take the Texas game personally? Yes, they fired him after all. No, he's too good a person. They're not exactly mutually exclusive. I maybe could have done better with the question because you can be a good person and take it personally playing the team that fired you, right? No, oh, yeah, you can. You can. I, and also you can be a good person and be the type that like in the in the realm of competitive spirit, you turn on some, you know, cold-blooded assassin, you know, mentality. I, I, I do believe that. I mean – some people take it beyond. Like, I think Michael Jordan may have taken it too far with some of his opponents with the trash talk he did. But, you I know, think some... a lot of the elite athletes are so driven that in, and, and that goes to elite CEOs. I think that in a normal setting with a uh, normal Jimmy's and Joe's, that they would probably be perceived as a jack wagon by most of them. Yeah, you're right. I think you're probably right. They and I mean, we know Peyton Manning was that way. How often did Peyton Manning light light into you know he light into one of his players for not running the right route or doing something like that? I mean, there's video of him cussing them out all the time, isn't there? Yes, uh, the answer is definitely a lot. Uh, that's that's how often he did it. A whole lot. Mm -hmm.